Welcome to the Adult Basic Skills Professional Development video series. Throughout our productions, we are committed to excellence in adult education and professional development in basic skills instruction. The goal of this video series is to improve the effectiveness and quality of instruction through focused professional development. The concept of mentoring actually originated with Homer's epic poem, The Odyssey. In this poem, Odysseus requests that his friend mentor advise and care for his family while he is away from home fighting the Trojan War. Mentor is really Athene, the goddess of wisdom, but you know how those gods and goddesses enjoy changing identities. Odysseus asks mentor, especially to guide Telemachus, his son, while he is away. Because of Odysseus' extended absence, Telemachus becomes worried about his father and decides to search for him. Rather than be a naysayer, Mentor accompanies Telemachus. As time passes, Telemachus realizes that it is for his own identity that he searches. The mentors in today's community colleges, like Telemachus, guide the novice teachers in their searches for their own identity as they work with adults. The ancient story of Mentor supports five necessary activities. These activities define the role of the mentor. First, the mentor intentionally fulfills responsibilities. The intentional process of mentoring leaves nothing to chance. The mentor intentionally performs specific behaviors to the advantage of the protege. Needs are diagnosed or recognized usually informally, then the mentor encourages growth and development by giving special gifts. Second, in the story of Odysseus, mentor is actually Athene, goddess of wisdom, who teaches the importance of modeling. The mentor, a master teacher respected by colleagues, administrators, and students alike, provides through modeling a standard by which professionalism can be measured. Third, the mentor is insightful and skillful in providing wisdom without rebellion in professional and personal situations. As the relationship develops, it becomes more reciprocal, one in which collegiality is equal. Fourth, the mentor provides a safe, supported environment in which the novice teacher may learn, experiment, grow, and become enculturated into the community college climate. The new teacher is encouraged to take risks that will lead to professional development and instructional improvement. Fifth, the mentor nurtures the protege by giving gifts, ones the mentor must possess personally before they can be given to others. Now I give to you the gifts which in turn will be given to your protege. Mentoring programs attempt to integrate the beginning instructor into the community college culture. The mentor's self-esteem plays an important part in developing a successful beginning teaching relationship. How a mentor feels about him or herself directly affects the first year teaching success of the protege. This video presents the principles of mentoring as a means of nurturing a healthy self-esteem, the most important quality of a true mentor. Evidence of a healthy self-esteem is a positive attitude. It is important that mentors, one, develop appreciation for self-worth, two, emphasize the value of self-esteem, three, present techniques for encouraging and contributing to another self-esteem and their personal and social responsibility, four, build an atmosphere of trust through recognizing personal feelings. 
Mentors give others permission to do the same. One cannot give away anything not possessed. Therefore, developing the positive self-esteem of the protege cannot take place if the mentor does not possess a positive self-esteem. Before one can help another person build positive self-esteem, a mentor must look at himself honestly, analyzing personal attitudes and feelings. These attitudes and feelings become the gifts to be presented to the novice teacher. There are 10 mentoring gifts available only through a sense of positive self-esteem. The first of these gifts is that of a good name. The mentor informs the novice teacher of the positive behaviors of a professional educator. Sometimes teachers feel apologetic about their profession. A teacher should exhibit pride in our chosen profession. We must remember that each protege is unique. There is no teacher in the world exactly like her, and she is not like you. That is the way it should be. The novice must develop her own identity and not merely become a clone of the mentor. Once this quality of unique identity is recognized and accepted, the mentor concentrates on the positive qualities brought to the teaching profession by the protege rather than try to concentrate on qualities not evident. The protege's rich personality should be encouraged to come through. Second, the mentor must give the gift of listening, a very powerful gift capable of changing behaviors. Listening tells people they're worthy of attention. Listening does not come naturally. It is a skill to be learned through practice. Qualities of listening include making eye contact, correlating body language and verbal message, setting time limits, giving empathetic feedback, respecting comfort zones, listening without interrupting, giving the protege a chance to respond to your reply. Teacher as decision maker is also a concept to consider. The mentor provides a safe, secure environment in which the novice teacher makes decisions without fear of reprisal. Only by participation in decision making does one learn to be an effective decision maker. The mentor, knowing the rules and expectations of the community college, has the responsibility of sharing that information with the novice teacher. This gift of knowledge of rules and expectations allows the protege to set work parameters. Before mentors can encourage novice teachers to have feelings, they must realize that feelings happen. However, reactions can be controlled. If inner criticisms surface, they must be set aside. The mentor may feel a need to express feelings, yet must decide where the action should be taken now or later. To assist the protege in becoming a successful professional, the mentor must grow in the capacity to express true feelings immediately, authentically, and without manipulation of others. The mentor honors true feelings by recognizing the fact that being authentic enriches our being. The mentor must allow the protege to have and express feelings. Only when feelings are expressed do they serve as a positive growth factor. Strong, effective relationships can only be built through reaching out and touching others' lives. Laughter is good medicine for whatever ails us. Appropriate humor affirms behaviors and gives power to the performer. The mentor should laugh and help others to experience humor and laughter. The mentor gives permission for the novice teacher to make mistakes. The mentor models through everyday living the ability to admit mistakes and deal with their consequences. She is also able to facilitate correcting errors because she has established a reciprocal relationship. The protege observes and discusses the mentor's behaviors under stressful circumstances. Learning from failure teaches powerful lessons, valuable lessons we all learn one way or another. The mentor makes these lessons easier by encouraging risk-taking and giving the protege permission to try new and different ideas without the fear of consequences. 
Because one of the mentor roles is to provide the novice teacher with growth opportunities, the mentor talks straight, giving suggestions when necessary. There are times when the protege feels stress. It is at these times that the mentor needs to offer support by communicating directly. To communicate accurate messages, the mentor talks straight by being sure that words, voice tone, and body language send the same message. Last, and perhaps the most important gift of all, is allowing the novice teacher the freedom to do what he must do. Freedom to make decisions and grow is possible only when the mentor gets out of the way and allows the protege the opportunity to do what he feels is appropriate. Freedom provides an environment for problem solving, coping with life creatively, and offering hope for improvement. This video establishes the mentoring process as one of a caring and nurturing relationship. In this relationship, the mentor must be self-assured. Self-esteem plays a tremendously important part in encouraging, informing, supporting, and coaching the novice teacher. Integrating the beginning instructor into the community college culture requires knowledge of content and skills in communication, interaction with people, and conflict management. However, these abilities find their maximum worth when coupled with a genuine concern for others, a concern made possible only when one possesses personally the very gifts to be given away. The mentoring process in which an experienced instructor recognizes the potential of a novice teacher allows for a growth experience that enriches the self-esteem of both parties. The power for growth which lies within the individual is released. Like Telemachus and Mentor, we find ourselves as we give to others. Thank you.